Honorable Mr. Uguru, esteemed Chairperson Combra, and members of the Pacific Heads of Education Systems, it's my great pleasure to welcome you uh, to the 24th consultation meeting of the Pacific Heads of Education Systems, together with our co-host, the government of Papua New Guinea. This is an essential regional platform for cooperation and mutual learning. Over the past 18 months, the world has experienced an unprecedented education crisis that more than ever calls for rethinking, uh, co-creating and collaboration to accelerate progress towards SDG4, quality inclusive education for all. Everywhere, the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated, amplified pre-existing inequalities. And UNESCO was alerting the world on that since the beginning of the crisis. It has increased reliance on technology all to often making access to devices and connectivity a condition for learning. Despite the bold action of governments across the region to provide remote learning opportunities, limited connectivity and lack of teachers in remote outer islands have made it all the more difficult to reach the most vulnerable and marginalized learners, including those with disabilities. But this disruption has also highlighted the irreplaceable role of teachers and a lash a capacity for innovation to maintain learning continuity at all levels. Many of the Pacific states are accelerating now a force on teachers' professional development and adopting technologies to enable diversified teaching and learning. We now stand at the critical crossroads, let me underline this point, to recover learning losses, build resilience to future shocks, and make every education system more inclusive and adapted to the challenges of our times, we know we have to change. And I think that climate change and the economic recession caused by this uh, sanitary health crisis are severely impacting the economies and labor markets of small island developing states. These downturns, combined with a decrease in remittances, could negatively affect participation in education, in particular that of girls in technical vocation and higher education because of cost, of course. We cannot let this happen, simply like this. Education and skills must be prioritized in the recovery with inclusion as the yardstick of every policy. Collaboration and mutual learning are critical for making technology a force for inclusion and innovation for creating pathways between education and labor markets, and for steering the transition towards more resilient and sustainable economies. For these, education has to be transformative. As a regional and global community, our responsibility now is to nurture competencies, values, and skills to help youth cope with climate change, digital transformations, and globalization. You know, the challenges of, of, of current times. UNESCO, as you know, is leading a force through major programs on education for global citizenship and sustainable development. At our World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development last May in Berlin, education ministers agreed to integrate climate action in curriculum at all levels. They recognized the importance of valuing indigenous knowledge systems. These regions' rich cultural diversity the wealth of its traditional knowledge and wisdom and its history of collaboration offer fertile ground for building a more resilient future through education. It's important to recognize and act on the distinctive economic, social, and civic needs in each country. This is a kind of collective and urgent responsibility. I wish to ensure you that UNESCO is committed to supporting the Pacific Heads of Education Systems remain a vibrant body for cooperation so that every child, every youth enjoys inclusive and equitable quality education. I thank you all.